All right, let's get started with lesson five, strong acids and bases. A strong acid is one that completely dissociates or ionize is in water. We'll talk about what the meaning of dissociate and ionize mean in just a moment. Now, the second point here is we do not use equilibrium arrows because the reaction for a strong acid lies entirely to the right. So here we have an example of a strong acid, which is nitric acid, one of the seven strong acids, and it's going to react with water. It's the only base in our solution, and it's going to form the conjugate acid, the hydronium ion. That's our conjugate acid, and our conjugate base, which is the nitrate or nitrate ion. Okay, so we have an acid-base reaction where the strong acid donates an H plus to the base, the water, forming that hydronium ion and the nitrate. The thing is here, though, is that there's no double arrow. There's no reversibility in this reaction. All right, this is kind of the hallmark idea of a strong acid. The only reaction that exist is in the forward direction. There's no reversibility, all right? Strong acids are strong because they create um, conjugate bases and conjugate acids that are very stable and unreactive, all right? So we don't really form a reversible process at all, which makes strong acids easy to understand as well as easy to use um, in a laboratory situation. And the math becomes very simple with strong acids. All right, now we can actually, to explain and understand ionization and dissociation a better, we can simplify this reaction a little bit. So since we know that water is the base, and in most cases, uh, when... Um, we deal with strong acids. A lot of times water will be the base, so we don't need to um, put it into our equation at all. And so if you know that water is the base, all you need to write is the strong acid of HNO3 aqueous. And if the base is not there, we assume that the base is water. Now, if the base is not water, then we have to go ahead and write it in to our chemical reaction. But if water is indeed the base, leave it out, is the base, leave it out and simplify this down. So what it means is, is that the strong acid is going to completely dissociate or ionize in water forming H plus and in O3. All right. Now the H plus, remember, is the simplified version. Oops. The H plus is the simplified version representation of the hydronium ion. These are the same thing, it's just that this is simplified down. All right, well, remember we talked about that when um, we create an H+, plus, we really have just a, a single proton. All right, because we've lost an electron. That electron um, has been ionized. So in the process of an acid reacting with a base, we sometimes refer it to being ionized because it loses an electron to create an H plus ion, which is really just a proton that's left over. And therefore, we use often that term ionized um, acids uh, because of that reason. Now, the word dissociate means essentially that two things are going to break apart from each other, dissociate from each other. And in this case, the H plus or the H breaks away from the nitrate, or in other words, dissociates from them, breaks down. So we often use the term dissociate and ionize um, when we're talking about acids and even really bases. Now, we usually don't use the term ionize for bases because bases don't get ionized, but they do dissociate, okay, as we'll see in a bit. All right, um, again, I only have a single arrow here because it, it predominates in the forward direction. Now, if you're looking at a, a K value here, the K value, the equilibrium constant, <coughs> or what we would 
end up doing is changing this to Ka because of the acid. So the Ka for this, because it's a one-way direction and it's completely product favored, completely product favored, there should be no reactant left over at all other than water because water should be the excess reactant, lots of it remaining in an aqueous solution. But the acid, the strong acid, is the limiting reagent here, should be completely used up, nothing left of it left. So therefore, the Ka for this reaction, for the strong acid, should be extremely, extremely large, much greater than one, all right? And you're gonna see this with strong acids. Strong acids should have very large Ka values. We go completely to completion, and we do not have any of the acid left over. All right. Let me clean this up really quick. All right, now, let me rewrite this out and give you kind of an example here. So if we take our HNO3, and again, we're assuming water is the base. We dissociate or ionize to form H plus and our conjugate base, which is the nitrate. If I start out with 0.1 molar, being the fact that this is a strong acid, all of this 0.1 molar should completely be gone. Should be anything left, and it all should be converted into the H plus. Therefore, H plus being a one to one molar relationship one-to-one -one ratio in the balanced equation, all of the moles of the, of the strong acid should be converted into the hydronium ion, and the concentration of our conjugate base should be the same because it is also a one-to-one -one relationship. We're not changing the volume, so therefore we're talking about moles here. All the moles of the acid will now be converted into H plus and the conjugate base in nitrate, okay? That makes our pH calculations very simple for strong acids, as you'll see um, here in a moment. All right, so here's a real example problem. Example problem one, where you have a strong acid, HClO4, um, and it's going to uh, essentially react with water. So I'm gonna simplify this down and uh, just go ahead and um, leave out water, th knowing that it's our base. And we produce the H plus, plus our conjugate base, which is ClO4. So again, the strong acid completely ionizes in water, and there's only one arrow, it's not reversible, to produce our H plus and our, which is our conjugate acid and our conjugate base, ClO4 minus, okay? So it seems like we're starting out with a 0 0.040 molar uh, concentration of our strong acid, all right? And again, because this is a strong acid, the coefficient is one, one and one in our balanced equation. So we would assume that all the moles of our strong acid is now converted into H plus. So the concentration of our H plus should be 0 0.040 molar, right? Because all of this is converted into our H plus. Plus, because of the one to one ratio, we should also have the same concentration of our conjugate base. So now we need to find the pH of our strong acid solution. Well, that's simple now. We now have the H plus concentration. If we know the H plus concentration, we know that the pH is equal to the negative log of the H plus concentration or the hydronium ion concentration. Therefore, the pH for this solution is the negative log of 0 0.040 molar, which is equal to 1.4. The pH of our strong acid solution is 1.4. Now, notice that it's a small number, which it should be, because uh, strong acids usually have high concentration of H pluses and therefore low pHs. 
So sometimes the pH can tell us or indicate if we have a strong acid or base. But nevertheless, remember that the pH is really dependent upon the H plus concentration. And it doesn't necessarily tell us that the acid that we have is strong because weak acids can also have low pHs. So we have to, we have to understand that, okay? Um, the pH is just tells us how much H plus or hydronium ion concentration is in our current solution, all right? So there's a problem for um, strong acids. What about strong bases? Well, strong bases are very similar to strong acids in the fact that the base is going to completely dissociate into ions in aqueous solutions. Um, we don't use the term ionization here because bases do not ionize. They do not lose electrons, all right? They create protons. They don't do that, but they do dissociate in aqueous solutions. Now, strong, uh, uh, strong bases are usually included in group one and group two hydroxides. So if I was to write down some strong bases here, it would be basically looking at the periodic table and look at group one um, metals. And they're gonna be in their hydroxide form. So like sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Group one with a hydroxide. Uh, potassium hydroxide is a strong base. Um, lithium hydroxide is a strong base. Rubidium hydroxide and so forth are strong bases. And then group two, uh, especially like strontium hydroxide, um, barium hydroxide, and even calcium hydroxide to a certain extent. These are all fairly strong bases um, that we can count on whenever you see them. All right. All right, so make sure you write down some of those strong bases for examples, okay? So just like strong acids, though, we don't use equilibriums at all. There is no reversibility to these reactions. The reaction lies entirely to the right. So it's the Kb value um, for, the, for this reaction, for sodium hydroxide, for instance, then, if it lies completely and is product favored, and there's going to be no reactant left over, then the Kb value is going to be extremely large, all right, indicating, again, that it's product favored, and there's no reversibility going on whatsoever. All right, so it also makes the math very easy too. All right, now in this equation, water would be our acid, but to simplify down, um, we're going to get rid of it. So just like we saw with the strong bases or strong acids, if water is the base, we get rid of it from our equation. Um, if water is an acid, then we get rid of it from our equation and we just write out the strong base. In this case, sodium hydroxide is the strong base and it dissociates into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Again, the word dissociate means that we break it apart into their individual ions, uh, sodium ions, and hydroxide ions, okay? All right, let's look at a problem now with strong bases. So what we need to do here is define the pH pH of a strong base with a concentration of 0 0.028 molar, all right? So what we can understand, again, if we write out our reaction, water is going to be the acid because it's not mentioned at all in our equation, so it must be the acid. So we dissociate into our um, sodium ions in our hydroxide ions. So um, the conjugate acid is going to be the sodium and the conjugate base is the hydroxide here. Now we know that we're starting out with 0 0.028 molar sodium hydroxide 
And since this is a strong base, all of this base should dissociate into um, sodium and hydroxide. And everything is a one-to-one -one ratio. So it should have equal number of moles. So the concentrations for each one of these will be the same. All right. So now we know what the hydroxide concentration is. Now, remember that the pOH is based on the hydroxide ion concentration, the conjugate base here. So the pOH can be found by taking the negative log of the OH concentration. So therefore, the pOH is equal to the negative log of 0 0.028 molar so therefore the pOH is equal to grandiose a 1.55 that's the pOH now to find the pH really quickly remember that the pOH plus the pH is equal to 14 so we can take our 14 oops take 14 minus the pOH, and that will give us the pH. Therefore, 14 minus um, 1.55 is equal to the pH of 12.45. All right, that's our pH right there, 12.45. Now, it's fairly high, and we would expect that. In a strong acid, or sorry, a strong base solution, we would expect that the hydroxide ion concentration is much larger than the hydronium ion concentration. All right, much larger than the H plus concentration or the hydronium ion concentration. All right, so we have a basic solution here with a strong base. It shouldn't be a surprise. All right, so there's one example problem. Let's do one more. So we have calcium hydroxide, which is a strong base. It has a concentration there of 0 0.0011 molar, and we're trying to find the pH again. So we essentially can sort of repeat our steps. So calcium hydroxide is going to ionize if water is the acid. It's going to ionize completely down into calcium ions plus hydroxide ions. Now we got two of those, so we have a balanced equation of two um, hydroxides. So that gives us the coefficients in our balanced equation. So our initial concentration, molar. All right. Now, since there's a one to two ratio, that means our concentration of our hydroxide should be twice the amount of concentration of our calcium hydroxide because of the two to one molar ratio. Okay, we have, should have twice the amount of moles of hydroxide as we do calcium. So we should multiply our concentration by two uh, molar to get the real concentration. Now our calcium ions is a one-to-one -one ratio, so they're going to have the same concentration. All right. All right, so now we're going to plug in the pOH, again, negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. So the pOH is equal to the negative log of our hydroxide concentration, which is going to be 0 0.00. .00 to 2 molar because it's twice that amount. So therefore the pOH is equal to um, negative or sorry uh, positive 266 because I got to take the negative log of it. All right and then we can use our relationship of pOH plus pH is equal to 14 where we can take 14 minus the pOH to give us the pH, therefore 14 minus 2.66 equals a pH of 11.34.
<coughs> Excuse me. So, our pH then of this particular problem is 11.34, and it is basic, um, greater than 7, and it would be ex assumed that the pH would be a basic solution because we have a strong base. So, again, the hydroxide ion concentration should be greater than the H plus concentration, which is what we would predict. Okay? So, there we go. So, there are strong acids and strong bases. Remember, in summary, that strong acids completely dissociate or ionize in water. Um, so, there is no equilibrium situation. Strong bases completely dissociate in water. They do not ionize, but they do completely dissociate in water. Um, so there's no equilibrium situation there. Both strong acids and strong bases are extremely product favored. The equilibrium constant is very, very large um, because of that. All right. So that is it for strong acids and strong bases. Please study this super well. Strong acids and strong bases are the big foundation for when we get into weak acids and weak bases. If you do not understand strong acids and strong bases, then weak acids and weak bases are going to be much harder to understand. Okay? Study your notes. Study this well. Prepare for a quiz. And that is it for now.